Good afternoon, off the bench sports family. Back again live at Louisiana Christian University, home of the Wildcats, for the 2022 Clark Christmas Classic. Joining us now is the Boyles Public Charter Vikings head coach, Antonio Benjamin. What's up, Coach? How's it going today? Going all right, man. Just ready for a game tonight. <laughs> Tonight you guys, uh, you guys are going to compete against the Jazz Clark Bulldogs host tournament team. Mm -hmm. um, what do you know about Jazz oh, Clark? A, a young, athletic, physical team, man, and they starting to buy into what Coach Ricks is trying to implement for them to buy into, man. And so they're starting to look like a real good basketball team, man. Right, right. Tell, tell us a little bit before we go back to the beginning or wherever we're going to go. Just talk to us a little bit about what this tournament has been for you guys. Oh man, it's been great, man. It's actually one of the better tournaments we've participated in this year. I thought Rex and J.S. Clark did a good job of making the schedule kind of very competitive, very balanced. Uh, kind of every game is a game that you want to see. And, and I mean, for us, man, it's just the competition, the level of competition from 5A, 1A, and even seeing a school like J.S. Clark that's in our division. So it's been right. great so far. No doubt, man, no doubt. Uh, Man, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of hesitant uh, to say this, because generally when you get this kind of accolade, uh, a major letdown happens. But you guys have so far had a perfect season. Um, and again, it's been mixed with 5A to what essentially is class B and C that's been turned into divisions. Yep. Um, what, what's this season been for you? Man, a game at a time, man. I mean, like, and it's funny, man, like, me and the team, the coaching staff, like, we rarely talk about the, the 17 and old stuff. Like, we really just talk about the next opponent. I mean, we live in that moment of the game that we just won, and we go over the mistakes that we want to do, and we build on the good things that we've done. But, man, we don't really harm ourselves with that too much, man, because that's not what we really here for. We're just a game at a time. Right, right, man. Uh... We were talking earlier, and I think the exact words were, that you used were, if you want to know who we are and what we've been through, mm -hmm. you need to have a conversation with our seniors. Absolutely. Tell, tell us a little bit about tell your seniors. I, had, I Previously to me coming back to Charter, I went to stand at Tioga High School, and I had some kids that when I went back to Falls Charter, wanted to get back into the program. And, build the program up and man, it, it didn't start off fun and game, it didn't start off 17 and no, probably started off 0 and 17, you know, but them cats never missed the practice, they never complained, they, they stuck with it, stuck with me, stuck with the coaching staff, they kept getting in the gym and they became great leaders and to be honest with you, our three seniors are the reason why we're in this situation we are. Man. Right, right, that, that's a hell of a oh, man, I feel like that coach. is, that is the, like that is the biggest thing about our season, our young season so far, that our three seniors have held it together for us. Man, I, I think we're going on a, a seven-year relationship, mm -hmm. uh, seven-year friendship. Yep. Um, I'm, I made a Twitter post during the, you know, I think it may have been on Christmas Eve, but it's a, a Facebook post. Mm -hmm. I just got back on Facebook, uh -huh. and I, I said the relationships that I built. You know, and, and doing what I'm trying to do, building what I'm trying to build, not for me, right. and definitely not for you. Right. We can't right. play anymore. Right. Right. But the relationship I build with you guys. Absolutely. My whole family, man. My, <laughs> my wife and kids, they, they love you like I love you, man. You know, like, you down, you come down, you, you know, you're always welcome at our house. When we go to Gonzalez and other places, we always call you. My kids, my wife, we want to see you. Right, right, right. She, she, uh, so I'm, I'm walking in the gym yesterday and she, she's like, hey, you. And it kind of stuck, you know, it kind of shocked me because Jerry, when you hear, right. A, a voice, because your wife is not, nah, like, she's not mild man. Nah, she the she she tough one in the house. Like, <laughs> she is, man. My wife's not a big friendly person, no great person, though, but she, you know, she's kind of quiet. Too. Super mild man, man. Absolutely, man. And, and I was kind of shy, kind of threw me for a loop, because, you know, you, you clearly can hear that it's a uh, right. lady's voice. Right, right. But it was like, really, like, you walked past me and, and did, like, I sometimes be in my own little world, man, but. 
you know, the relationships that you build in this game, man, um, they are super important. But the relationships that you build with your team and getting them to buy into the process of learning how to win again. Because, right. again, that year and a half that you were gone, they had a, a hard time on a ball puzzle chart. Absolutely, man. Not quickly. Because mm -hmm. it, it wasn't rebuilt no. quickly. No. But how much did you have to invest into them buying into learning how to win again? I mean, I, prime example, man. I had, we had a meeting with my assistant coaches the other day. We were all just going over kind of what we wore throughout the season and just talking basketball. And, and I gave them the perfect example. Um, from this team, like if we don't work hard, if we don't do the thing that we're doing now, meeting, discussing, like then we can't sell them until what we want to teach them. And right. so like our hard work matches their hard work, you know, right. and so we set the tone for our team. That's that's leading by example. Absolutely. And I you know, I'm I'm probably tougher on kids than anyone <laughs> because especially the ones that I see their Full potential. God, God gave me a great vision to see into the future. Mm -hmm. and, and so, when, when you lead from the front and not from the rear, the sky's the limit. There's no stopping you because right. everybody sees what the mirror shows. Absolutely. But when the mirror cracks, how do you refill it? Mm -hmm. What have you done to refill the mirror? Just work, man. Bits and pieces. Like, you can't just throw it all together. Like, you gotta find it. The pieces that match, and you know, like you got to build that thing up from the, the, the first piece of broken glass to the piece that can get it back sold in together, man. And it's been a lot of hard work, a lot of gloves on, you know, a lot of late nights, a lot of early mornings, you know, a lot of late nights in the gym, a lot of early mornings in the gym. I'm just trying to get this thing back together. But then it goes back to my seniors because they've been right there with me, you know, late nights, those early mornings. And so, man, I'm just, I'm more proud of those three guys, you know, because like. I, it, it, it's been, it was, it was, it was rough early for them. Can, can, can we talk about something real quick? Absolutely. Uh, I, I remember seventh grade, mm -hmm. the seventh grade year, and I've always called him Opie because, <laughs> I, and, and I asked him about this yesterday. My baby? Yeah, I said, uh, I, I was looking in the scorebook and I was looking for Antonio Benjamin. Oh, yeah. And uh, his name is Armani. Absolutely. Uh, and we didn't want to name him my name. I wanted him to have his own name, man. It was not so much about that, but I asked him, I said, why did you allow me to call you your dad's name from, like, I met him, I think it might have been, I might have met him in the fifth grade, but no, it was no. seventh grade when he got his basketball went, going. Right. Yeah. And he was like, man, I don't care nothing about that. Right. And he said, just, he said, that's my dad, man. I love yeah. him. That's my baby, man. Like, Man, honestly, like, man, that cat, man, he, he's humble, man, he's hardworking, great kid, man, he don't really cause trouble, he just loves the game of basketball, and he's always picking my brain with the game of basketball, certain little nuances of the game that he wanted to figure out, and, 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 and as he's gotten more in love with the game, I've stepped myself back from pushing into it and allowing him to be able to push me more of him want more, and so, man, it's been, a, it's been a great ride with him, man, and it's just a uh, I'm laughing inside because y'all are really the same person. He he has your, you know, like he really reveres the game of basketball. He even more so. Like we we had a conversation yesterday, and he, re, you know, not only loves you as his dad, but he reveres and respects you as a basketball mind. It wasn't daddy this or daddy. It was coach said, we got to do it like this, so this is what I'm doing. But, bro, you can score the ball, why don't you take, it's not about me. No, it's not. You know, again, seeing your old footage, seeing your old stats, mm -hmm. the numbers you put up as a collegiate dude that could really hoop, mm -hmm. um, guy that has learned the game and learned to be a better coach mm -hmm. through trial and error, you know, how, how has he become so familiar with being successful right now. Man, I just try to put him around good people, people that know the game, talk the game, um, that won't stir him in the wrong, you know? And so, man, we, uh, Lance Brasher and Ash, kind of a good friend of mine, Jimmy, uh, 
Jamel Juno, like I kind of keep him kind of around those guys that always pick his brain and always challenge him a little bit on the basketball court. Right, right, right. When you think about this process, and I know, you know, coaches have their own superstitions mm -hmm. and, and things of that nature, but what can you do right now in this moment to keep them driven and focused? And, and I, I call what, what I try to process is TLC, mm -hmm. tough love and consistency. And you, you got to add... Add a little. I think the word, the last word you said, consistent, man. Like consistent effort, consistent work. You know, like I, I feel like if we become inconsistent, then we're losing of what we set out to be. You know, and so I keep everything consistent with. Like, I, and I tell them all the time. I know guys know that, man. And like I, fuck, I hold them to a high standard because I know the work that they put in, and right. I want people to see that. You know, and so I, those guys understand that the work, and they, they understand that it's got to be consistent every night. Talk, talk to us about accuracy and efficiency. Like right? certain things in sports that matter that we just don't have real conversations about anymore. Or if we've ever had them. Oh man, I mean, the accuracy part, it, it, it goes back to kind of doing things the right way. You know, like no false steps. And I tell them guys all the time, like, if we, we have a false step, we're going to run that set over, we're going to run that play over, <laughs> we're going to run that defensive series over, like, we're going to do it until we get it the right way. And then once they see it the right way and they have success, they want more of it and more of it and more right. of it. And success breeds success. Yes, yes, man, yes. Like, we ain't out here to, to, to play to lose. And look, basketball, we're 17 and over minutes, more than it's having kids from Lamar's parish that on the news, that, that's the thing that when they grow old, they get our age, they able to look back and say, look, I was a part of something special. Right. And so, man, and just having them to see these cats face, you know, like, I, that's that's the, the biggest undefeated thing for me, man. And again, um, it, it's just certain coaches that are big in my world. Mm -hmm. Because again, again, it means a lot when a coach just picks up the phone out of the blue mm -hmm. and Media and coaches don't have relationships. <laughs> no. They don't. No. Um, they, you guys pick up the phone and call me relentlessly mm -hmm. just to say hi. Mm -hmm. when, when you look at coaches in the past, mm -hmm. steps to greatness as a coach, mm -hmm. how many steps have you had to take lot, to man. get to this point? Man, it, it, and to this point, man, ain't done enough, man, you know what I mean? Like, I, I just try to surround myself with great people again, man, guys that love people and love to do their work, man. Like, I'm, I'm a guy that, like, I like to put on my hard head. I got a grandpa that's 78 years old, man. That can't still do brick work. I'm it getting is, it is, up today. Yeah, so, <laughs> so, like, I was raised by guys like that. Like, man, we're going to get it out the mud. We're going to work hard at it. Ain't going to be no crime, no excuse, just work, you know? And so that's kind of like my foundation for me and my family. How, how, uh, I want to give you more accolades. Can I give you more accolades? No, no, man, no. Just one more, please. What you got, Angel? Come on. Uh, how do you balance being a high school head boys basketball coach and being a regional champion that's about to go to Vegas in, a, in another oh, month? I'm not going. My buddy and his team and my nephew and them going. Man, that was I, your work. Don't you dare. Oh, no, no, man. Look, look, I, I'll be honest with you, man. My guy Jamel, uh, you know, he the head coach at Bucket High. Man, he came with this plan of, as far as what he wanted to do for our parish. And he was a guy that himself had a chance, had success on the collegiate level. And he came back and, man, he set the groundwork on it. And it kind of matched my theory of what I felt like we needed in our parish, man. And me and that guy, and Chris Robinson as well. Like, man, we just we just work at it, man. And this AU team that's going to Vegas, man, they're a special group, man. A special group of kids. They come in, they work hard, they, they're going through training now, like when they're getting their bodies right, an eight-year-old man, so right. they're committed to it, man. And so people, you know, you, you get a chance, you need to check them out, man. Vols Parish Elite, eight, baby. I can't stand you. Man, I love that, man. Man, I can't stand you. I love you. that, man. That means something to us, though, seriously, man. I know I do, man, and that's why I wanted to give you guys. You came out there and seen us in Gonzales, yeah. like, that means something to us. Man, it meant something to me that right. you thought enough of me, right. a small, independent company, to come and, and, you know, you could have called any right. major publication. Uh, I'm calling you. For what? I don't know for what. Man, you my boy, man. I'm not calling nobody. Why? When you can do the same thing they do, man. 
We just need more continued people to get you on the plat on this platform and let you showcase what you do. Man, I'm 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 only as good as you guys. Right. So I, more I'm, guys like me need so, to get you out there. So I'm gonna say this right here because mm -hmm. I'm I'm as humble as they come as well. If if it wasn't for Stuart Scott, I wouldn't be who I am. May, may God continue to hold him and keep him. But if it was not for Stuart Scott, mm -hmm. I could never be this man. Right. You know, so we're, we're going to go right now, man.